Hello Fretcom, this is Max Forte to bring you the Q&A. You know, I posted a video about a week ago, I think, or a week and a half ago. You guys dropped down your questions. So basically, I got all the questions I needed and I pretty much broke it down in two parts because I had a lot of questions and I don't want the videos to be too long. So this is part one of two. I hope you enjoy it. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the questions. So the first question I have here, this is from Ryan from uh, uh, Ryan's Frags 34. How you doing, Ryan? Hope all is well. What is your favorite fragrance house? And this is a loaded question. Uh, this is the million dollar question right there. It's really hard to pinpoint a favorite fragrance house. There's many fragrance houses that I love. You know, right off the bat, I can think of, you know, at least a dozen. But if I had to just choose one, I guess it would probably have to be between Creed or Dior. The reason why I mentioned these two is because these fragrances from these houses are very easy to wear, easy to please, and you have something from every angle, something for every taste, something that you can wear all year round. Um, you know, I, I think Creed and um, Dior are both very versatile. So, but if I really had to probably choose one, I'd probably go with Dior. Christian Dior would probably be my, my favorite fragrance house of all time. Yes. All right, question number two comes from Cy, uh, Frag Boy Stewie. How are you doing, Cy? Hope all is well with you, bud. Uh, this is a loaded question. It's actually a few parts to this question. So um, he asks, if you ever were to create your own scent, which perfumer would you choose? Um, and I, I'm going to break it down. So which perfumer would I choose? Um, I would love to be able to work with, uh, you know, I'm going to have a... a Best Noses, my favorite, ta uh, my favorite top 10 perfumers and noses of all time, which is in the works. It'll be uh, coming out very soon, probably within the next couple of weeks, you know, two to three weeks. So um, any one of those top 10 perfumers that I tell you will have, uh, I would be absolutely honored to work with. You know, uh, Francoise de Manchy, um, you know, uh, Alberto Marilla's, uh, you know, it's just, so many great perfumers out there. Like I said, I think that video, the top 10 perfumers of all time, will be a good starting point. If I could and I had the ability to work with any one of those top 10 perfumers, I would be absolutely honored and stoked. Um, so that's that. Now he also asks about the notes. What would the notes be? So the notes itself would be along the lines of something that's oriental and woody spicy. I like boozy fragrances. I like fragrances that are a bit spicy. I like, you know, a really nice woody background. I love patchouli. Um, so it would be probably something along those lines. As far as the name of the fragrance, I have no idea what I would call it. Um, you know, really, once I got deep into the process of creating, uh, you know, the fragrance and my creative juices were flowing, I'm sure I would come up with some creative names. I love gems, like geology, you know, like, so, you know, I'd probably do something with gems or, you know, something along those lines, but really don't know exactly what I would call it. Um, so, yeah, definitely Oriental Woody Spicy Composition, and I don't know what I would name it. So, um, that's it. And then your second part of the question is, do I play chess? You see my board? You know, I absolutely love chess. I think chess is one of the uh, most uh, stunning games out there. It's really, you know, um, uses your mind, your brain. It's really great. By the way, there's a great movie that I love with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. I think it's called, I think it's called A Life of a King. It's on Netflix. Great movie. Uh, it's about chess as well. I love chess and I do dabble at it a little. I'm not, you know, a great mastermind chess player, but, you know, I, I like to have fun with it. So absolutely, I do play chess. So third question is from Jim Slade. Uh, he says, you mentioned in some context that I had uh, took part of a band. So he wants me to tell you a little bit about it. So yes, I do play the guitar, the acoustic and the electric guitar. I love music. It's one of my passions besides fragrance. So, uh, you know, as far as the guitar goes, I have played in high school a little bit in the band, a very tiny bit in college, but mostly as a hobby for fun. Nothing really major, not professional at all, but I do enjoy, you know, I like, I like classic rock, I like blues, you know, and I do play the guitar. So I hope that answers that question. Number four, Alex Araza asks, how do you define niche fragrances, especially as distinct from indie or collection designer product? I guess you mean about uh, comparing niche with designer, high-end designer, and the private collections. So basically, I broke this down into four categories. I hope this is helpful. The way I see it, the market is fragmented into four types of fragrances. I think you have your, your designers, okay? Your mainstream general store, universal appeal uh, that cater to the masses, you know, easy to please, you know, easy to grab, nothing outstanding and overly uh, expensive. I think that's your number one. 
Then you have your upper class designer slash uh, niche. That's like the, the beginning, the starting point of niche fragrances. That's found in most of the high-end general stores, like your Nordstrom's, your Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, uh, those type of stores. Uh, the exclusive lines, the Privé lines, the private collections, I think would fall perfectly into that category. Then you have your Indie, which would be your niche brand in smaller scale. Uh, very uh, low production quantities, uh, very quality and unique sense, but not necessarily highly priced, but good, very good quality. Then you have your real niche fragrance houses, uh, your luxury brands, uh, unique scents, higher price tags uh, than most. So I think this is um, kind of like the way I see the market today, you know, fragmented into these four categories. I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any further questions regarding this, feel free to email me at maxforty at gmail.com and I'll try to, uh, to go more in, in depth with that. The fifth question here is by Vidzarat M. Vidzarat M asks, since you've tried so many fragrances, what five you think would be the best ever made? Now that's another loaded question. I mean, I love fragrances. There's so many amazing fragrances that were created over the years. You know, I've been wearing fragrances ever since I can remember, so I'd say, you know, from like five years old and up that I can remember. Um, funny story is my mother said that, you know, uh, perfume was one of my first words. Um, funny thing, but it's a true story. But anyway, that I, as far as that I can remember, you know, five, six years old when I started to really, you know, gravitating towards wearing fragrances. But an incident that I really remember vividly, which I'll cover down um, in a question down below, I'll tell you which one was the first fragrance that I really remember taking a bath on. But to answer this question, the top five fragrances of all time for me that were created, I'd have to go with these groundbreaking fragrances here in my opinion. 1970 Azara Pour Homme, really love that fragrance. Uh, it's very, very, uh, it's a fougere at its best. You know, it's something that will grow hair on your chest. It even rhymed, huh? But yeah, it, it's a great fragrance. Um, you know, it's just, I think it was groundbreaking when it came out and it's still alive today. It's still alive and kicking. People like it. Not as strong, not as, uh, you know, pungent as it once was, but it's still a great fragrance. Uh, the number two fragrance here, I would have to say 1994 Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. That to me was also groundbreaking when that fragrance came out. The, the, the creamy, uh, you know, citrus in there, the honey, vetiver. Just, you know, the tobacco in there, just a beautiful fragrance, amazing compliment gather. If you can find a, an older bottle of that fragrance, I guarantee you're going to smell amazing and, and women will absolutely love the way you smell. So that's another one for me. The third one I'd have to say, 2007 Dior Sauvage First Shore Cure. That's like a fresh cure. It's like taking the original 1966 um, Sauvage Pour Homme and adding the notes of, of leather in there. Uh, that's this continued fragrance, hard to find, but again, if you can get your nose on it, you're going to see what I mean. It's just a great fragrance taken to the next level. Absolutely adore that fragrance, and it's definitely one of my favorites of all time. And the last two would be probably uh, the latter, you know, days of my life. I'd go with um, 2008 Amouage Jubilation 25 for man, which to me it's like one of the king of the Oriental fougeres. Just a beautiful fragrance through and through. Uh, if you uh, watch my Amouage, Good, Bad and the Ugly, I talk extensively about that fragrance and it's definitely one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And last but not least, uh, 2010 Les Royales by the House of Creed, uh, Spice and Wood, uh, which happens to be probably one of my favorite creeds of all time. Beautiful fragrance. You get a lot of spice notes, which I like, and you get a lot of woods, which I also love. So it's a combination of my two favorite um, kind of uh, genres, if you will. So those are probably the top five that come to mind. This is a loaded question, really hard to tackle, but I hope, uh, you know, this was a good answer. The sixth question here is by Phyllis uh, Lervello. Uh, so Phyllis Lervello asks, are there any feminine per se fragrance that you would wear or mix it up or layer? Um, just asking because sometimes I wear fragrances that are uh, supposedly masculine. Absolutely. Me and my wife, we actually share some fragrances. I have a lot of fragrances, about probably a couple dozen fragrances that are actually, um, you know, unisex. And I have a lot of fragrances that are unisex at that. But I probably have a lot of feminine fragrances, about a dozen in my arsenal that I do share with my, my wife. So I definitely do that. I would do that, you know, on its own. I would layer it. I have no problem whatsoever. Uh, wearing a fragrance that's, you know, supposedly made uh, for a female audience. Uh, and I think that anybody should wear, if, you, if you're a gal and you want to wear a guy's fragrance, why not? If it works with your body's skin, your chemistry, if it makes you feel good, if it smells great to you, go for it. 
Nothing wrong with that. Uh, seventh question here by David uh, Bibianca. Dibianca. David Dibianca asks, any chance you can put together a video with your top five or so um, blends, you know, like I have the new blends video. So he wants to know about layers. Absolutely, and of course, I have actually a top 10 favorite blends video coming up soon. It's another idea that I worked on. As you saw in Max in Motion videos over the past few months, I talk about new blends. I do a lot of layering. I have so many fragrances that if I were to just wear them by themselves, I never wear them. So I figured, you know, if they go well together, if they complement each other, I always like to layer. That's something that I do constantly. So yes, absolutely. I will have a top 10 uh, favorite layer uh, fragrances of all time or new blends of all time, if you will, coming up very soon. So stay tuned for that. Question number eight by Gary Lane. How you doing, Gary? Max, I'd like to know what's your top two homage and top two Montal fragrances. I wanted to know this a long time. Absolutely. My top two favorite montage, uh, montages. My top two favorite homages are Jubilation 25 and Memoir Man. And my top two favorite Montals are Intense Cafe and Red Oud. Love that Red Oud. So, hope that helped you out. Jerika Kovac, uh, this is the ninth question now, asks, what sweet fragrances, something like one million, would you recommend to a senior in high school? All right, so I have uh, two back-to-back -back, uh, last year and the year before um, my top favorite uh, high school or college scents that I, you know, suggest you watch it if you can. Will help you with some suggestions, you know, for fragrances to wear, you know, in high school. But I'm going to give you some um, ideas here, some suggestions, some recommendations, if you will. Um, Things that are similar to one million, but a fraction of the price are Antonio Banderas, The Golden Secret, Cuba Royale, and Halloween Man by Jesus Del Pozo. They're great fragrances. I actually like Halloween by Jesus Del Pozo a lot. It's actually not as uh, strong and not as sweet as one million. You may really like that if you don't like that bubblegum sweet feel that you get with one million. So it's definitely something to try. But if you want something not too expensive that smells great and also has that loud effect that, you know, I'm right here kind of, uh, you know, presence kind of fragrance, I would go with these three choices. Uh, Polo Red Intense um, by Ralph Lauren, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Mall, and Diesel Fuel for Life Spirit, the latest uh, creation from Diesel. I think those three fragrances are really good and, and you can find them easily discounted out there for less than 40 bucks, um, between 40 and 50 for, for the most part. And you'll smell great in high school, I think, with, with these offerings. If you want something that's kind of like one million, you know, loud and with a lot of presence, okay? Rio Cappuccino, my good friend Rio, how you doing, bud? Um, you have a question here. In your opinion, which is the best discontinued fragrance from the private land? Thanks. So the private line, fri private blend, I I'm assuming Tom Ford. Um, I love private blend. I love Tom Ford. It's one of my favorite houses of all time. Um, and I think a lot of the best discontinued fragrances that they had were from the original 2007 lineup. So I absolutely love Amber Absolute. It was recently re-released. Not as opulent, not as... Um, a resinous and not as long lasting as the original 2007, but still you have the same smell. Uh, it's not a dark, the juice is a little lighter as well, but it still smells really good. So I would have to go with Moss Brash. You know, if I had to choose one fragrance that I'm really sad to see go was really Moss Brash. It has that, you know, really traditional, um, you know, feel to it with a little, you know, twist that Tom Ford gives their, his fragrances. That's just unbelievable. I love Moss Brash. It's something that and I hear through the grapevines that it may be re-released, so I, I'm hoping that it does. That's definitely one of my favorites of all time, and that's definitely the one that I miss the most from the original lineup. All right, the 11th question here by Shane D. I need your opinion on a fragrance that I would, um, that you would think would be great for a job interview. Thanks. How you doing, Shane? Um, great guy. You know, uh, thank you. So, thank you so much for your for your question. So. I would keep it simple. Three words for a job interview. Professional, clean, and crisp. You definitely want to have a really professional appearance and nothing too loud or nothing that's screaming and, and you know, it's just, you want something that's subdued and, and something that's quiet more on a clean and crisp uh, genre of things. But if I have to give you three choices, I'd go with Aqua Di Gio, you can't go wrong with that, Versace Pour Homme, or Chanel Allure Homme Sport. I think those three are great fragrances for job interview, and I think you'd do great with them. 
but you're going to run the risk of triggering some memories from the interviewer, maybe you know an old boyfriend, an old you know a situation where it's not going to work well for you. So um, you know a lot of times, just you know shower and you know good grooming from like a soap or deodorant will do you fine. But if you must wear a fragrance, I would do something like that. Uh, and like I said, in the case of an interview, a lot of times less is more. All right. The twelfth question here by Jurassic Forest. Which are the best websites to purchase discounted fragrances? Thanks. Great question. Um, there's a lot of websites out there. There's you know dozens, if not hundreds, of websites these days. E-commerce is growing uh, on a daily basis. There's you know websites popping every now and again. But reputation is something that's really important. And you know over the past few years, I've dealt with many different websites. And if I had to name three sites that I really enjoyed the experience and had no problems up to this point, I may have it in the future. But up to this point, I never had any problems with these sites. They are um, FragranceNet. dot com, dot com, and the one that that I've had the most uh, great experiences over the past you know six months. Uh, was beautyspin.com really a great site, awesome selection. Uh, you know, there's you know discounts every now and again, so it's definitely a good one to trust. And I think if any one of you watching this can vouch for these three sites, please comment down below. Let us know. But as far as my personal experiences, these are really good sites that I recommend. All right, I don't want this to go too long, so I'm going to go、uh, one more question here, which is actually a five-part question. Then we're going to pause. And at a le- later day, I'm gonna, you know, put the、uh, part two, probably another week or two, or, you know, I'll put the part two out. All right. Last questions by my good friend Julian Ehab from Notes Punch. How you doing, bud? Thanks for the question. This is、um, this is his question. I know your most complimented is one million, but what is your most complimented besides one million? All right. So besides one million.、Um, I'd say Dolce Gabbana Pour All 1994 was the co- was the cologne, the fragrance that got me the most compliments up to this day,、uh, w- without a doubt. You know, every time I wear that fragrance, I get compliments. People want to know what it is, and unfortunately, I can't even tell people where to get it because, as we all know, the new version of that fragrance was you know extremely watered down, and it's nothing like what it once was. But yeah, I'd have to say Dolce Gabbana Pour All, the 1994 edition, was definitely. Uh, one of my most complimented of all time. Question number two here from you is, what is your most hated fragrance? I'd have to say Italie d'Orange,、uh, Secrétions Magnifiques. That's a fragrance that's you know you can't, I can't wear that fragrance. It smells so vile that you know it's just something that it's like a joke. You know it's a joke of a fragrance. I mean I, it's art. Absolutely, you know it's obviously art, but it's not something that I would ever wear.、Um, third part of the question: What's your top favorite of all time? So I have a video coming soon of my top ten、uh, favorite fragrances of all time. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really good one. But on question five of this video, I have addressed some of them. So you know those five fragrances that I that I spoke about in a few questions. I think was question number five. We'll answer you,、uh, you know, on that question. So the fourth question here: What I'm wearing today? Today's actually Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone! It's February 14th today, and I'm wearing the Yves Saint Laurent Trifecta: La Nuit de l'Homme,、uh, Pour Homme, the Intense version with the Le Parfum. I do about、uh, two to three sprays of the、uh, La Nuit de l'Homme、uh, EDT. To two of the Le Parfum and two of the Lintense. I know it's a lot, but you know what? So in a cold, bitter day like today, you know, it's actually today we had weather that was below zero here. I think we got it out to as low as minus six. So yeah, that definitely worked. So that was my scent of the day today. And that last question by Ehab Notes Punch was、uh, my favorite、uh, note in perfumery. So. It would have to be along the lines of boozy notes, like you know, rum, cognac, those kind of notes. I really love the, the you know the booziness and the fragrance, and I also love plum, and I like the oriental woody spiciness in fragrances. So, hope that helped you with the、uh, with the answers. Thank you so much, everyone.、It、means a lot. You know, I hope that you know your questions were、um, well answered. Stay tuned for part two of the Q and A coming out soon. And I'll be doing another Q and A in the near future. Thank you so much, Fredcom, for all your help, all your support. This is Max Forte. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.